I took them on board, Andrew. I mean, you know, he's saying that inflation is still too high. That were his thoughts. And uh, where we move from here as far as rate policy over the next, you know, four months leading up to Christmas, where does 24 take us? And does, do we see a continual downtick as far as uh, CPI, the, uh, the inflation story gets better, not worse? These are all the thoughts that uh, I think Jay Powell and his team are uh, concentrating on. And the market's taking that to say, well, you know, what's happening with US dollar, the impact as far as yields. And uh, yeah, it's quite, I think it'll be quite an interesting week. Yeah, what, what did you make of the market reaction to what he had to say? Because certainly equity markets sort of gyrated and then sort of rallied into the close. And also yeah. those treasury yields did move higher. Treasury yields up, yes, and absolutely right as far as um, Saturday morning's close here. You know, the Dow was up and it was bit up well, you know, and I'm looking at the Nasdaq nearly up 1%. That US dollar index, Andrew, it's certainly smashed through 104. It's now 104.15. So it's had a really strong move and I wouldn't be surprised that it's further upside yet because it, it got through the 103.80, 103.90 barrier. Um, it's smashed through and possibly you're looking at 104.50 by end of month. Yeah, and of course, that comes ahead of what we're going to get this week, certainly out of the States, with uh, we'll get the, the key uh, GDP numbers. But I guess more importantly, as far as markets are concerned, looking forward is those jobs numbers. Absolutely. NFP on Friday, non-farm payrolls, first Friday of the month, and they're saying 180,000 for August. So if, it gets, if it's that number or higher, then that's a good point. Um, that's where estimates are coming in and they're very hard to... Um, I think, forecast on them because there's so many moving parts, Andrew, and uh, that's where we just need to sit down, have a look at it, where it drops, and then the impact naturally the you know next week, how that uh, is all impacted and, uh, and take on board with sentiment. Many market observers talking about this Goldilocks zone that the US is in at the moment, where you're seeing that economic strength, the jobs market remaining solid, and inflation coming off. What, what do you... What's your interpretation of what you're seeing in the States at the moment, Pete? Well, you've got to agree with it. I mean, you know, the equity markets over the first eight months, Andrew, have been electric. And so you, you put that to bed at the end of August and say, wow, you know, if, you, if you're on the 31st of December to where it is today, it's certainly dramatically improved. There's, that, that's a good point. The second point is, yes, inflation keeps on coming down. And so you've got to say, well, maybe they've got that under control. But as we know, a lot of US firms earn big proportions of their income externally outside the United States. You have only got to have a look at the likes of China and what's happening with Germany and Eurozone. So are we at the tipping point? Is that Goldilocks rally about to get shaken up a little bit? Time will tell. But you can't get away from those global themes as far as China and certainly what's going on. I keep a close eye on Germany and industrial production. Well, Pete, you mentioned, you mentioned China, and, and that's certainly uh, an issue as far as the government's concerned. We heard from, over the weekend, uh, the Treasurer, Jim Chalmers, talking about concerning what they're seeing in China at the moment, that uh, anticipating that Australia's growth is going to be substantially weaker uh, due to, to China's slowdown. Well, China's demand, you know, so if they want less, Andrew, and they're not selling those finished goods then that's going to greatly impact the first line, which is exporting those commodities to China because there's no need for them. So that'll be a, probably a tail off. We've had big numbers for iron ore this year, you know, record numbers. So maybe it's just, you know, the, the market cycle. Uh, the property sector is of much concern to China and how, they, um, how that all unwinds and who's holding the debt. Someone's equity is another man's debt. So we've just got to see how that uh, materialises, I think, you know, September, October could be very telling months. Yeah, and we're going to get uh, some further data there to uh, PMIs out of China this week. So I guess a further yeah. indication of where the economy is going. But there's also that ongoing frustration among markets that, that they're just not seeing enough stimulus in China at the moment. Well, that's exactly right. And, you know, they're sitting on their hands to some extent, but it's a very delicate situation. So, you know, again, how do they manage forward? You could, you know, you could write a thesis on it. And that's something I think all day traders need to be conscious of, you know, what's happening in China and do your research, uh, understand those big moving parts and then appreciate, you know, who's holding international debt, the domestic banks there. And of course, the industrial demand externally, those countries and, you know, are you buying a new fridge? Am I buying, you know, a new microwave? All of that, 
Act, all of those sort of things. Uh, that's a global concern. How's this playing out in regards to commodity prices at the moment, Pete? Um, iron ore remaining, what's well, what well, close to around 110 US dollars a ton at the moment. Yeah. Yeah, it's well down. I mean, well, it's, it's a bit up, but it's well down from those highs of the 160s and the 170s. So there's that thought. So it, it seems to be a, a fairly choppy uh, crude sitting at that 80 to $85 channel. Uh, we haven't seen any dramatic move. C copper is a wonderful barometer, Andrew, and that's still at 8300 uh, So I'm, I'm not sure whether you're going to see a lift off across the base metals anytime soon. And uh, as far as iron ore is concerned, possibly, you know, 110, 120, that 100 to 120 sort of bandwidth might be where it, uh, it oscillates between. And crude, well, that's a different story. I won't be surprised to see it edge up from here. All right. And Pete, uh, locally, of course, we are we're sort of coming towards the, the end of uh, reporting season. What's your take yeah. out, Ben, of what you've seen so far? Well, you've got to look at the market, Andrew. I mean, it's pretty pretty strong. It's, it's performed quite well, considering it's, it hasn't been a NASDAQ this year, but it, it certainly, uh, under the circumstances, I think it's relatively strong. And it's very difficult to forecast moving forward because there's so many global themes starting to unravel as far as demand picture, but the overall situation in Australia seems to be fairly um, buoyant though interest rates are, are, are taking a hard hit on renters and, of course, the inflation data. So uh, we've just got to see how we run up to Christmas. Retail sales are very important and uh, it's, uh, it, it could be a, it'll be an interesting four months, Andrew, put it oh, that way. Yeah, yeah, well, always interesting. Uh, we talk about the run up to Christmas, but of course, before then, we've got to get through September, which is just around oh, the yeah. corner. Uh, Historically, of course, uh, globally and perhaps more specifically in the US, September tends to be, on average, a down month. Yeah, it does, and uh, we all understand that. So we've just got to see. We've had a big eight months, and maybe it's you know some of that hot air is going to come out of the market. Um, it's just we've just got to see how it rolls, and it's very difficult. You've got to have a look at the VIX, have a look at uh, you know put options, protect your positions, strategies, all of those sort of things. People have got to be conscious as far as hedging, and uh, yeah, be just do your homework, and um, yeah, don't sit on your hands and say it's only going to go up. 